Arabs used to honor their guests as well, and they used to take pride in that as well. So at least based on this, we can see that the honoring of guests, this is not a something, a new concept that our Prophet introduced. It was there since time of Prophet Ibrahim, or even before that, but our Prophet has affirmed this practice, that this is a very good practice, and we should continue on with this, uh, inviting and honoring the believers. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَالْيُكْرِمْ ضَيْفَ So whoever believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment should honor his guest. Now here our Prophet is mentioning honoring the guest with belief in Allah and the Day of Judgment. So our Prophet is reminding us in a way that on the day of judgment, we will not only be asked about the about our salat, about zakat, about saum, all those obligations, but we will also be asked about our duties towards our fellow believers, our parents, siblings, neighbors, and as part of that is honoring the guest as well. So when guests come, we have to honor them, and that is also something that we would have to be held, we would be held accountable on the day of judgment. When we look at the benefits of hosting in general, we see that this is a way of bringing people together and bonding. There was a time in the past where like extended families, they just used to live together under one house, and then as time passed, families separate, extended families separated, then moved into suburbs, different cities, and now we are separated even by oceans. Even though telecommunication is a good means of connecting people and keeping in touch, but the relationship is not the same as when you meet with people, sit with them, and talk to them. So hosting, inviting guests, and sitting with them is a good way to come to know people, sit with them, and bond with them, talk about common issues, talk about politics, talk about concerns, and build bonds. Now, if one is to think that, well, we can invite guests, but that means we have to spend a lot of money, that involves spending money. So there are many ahadis which say that, uh, as far as the risk is concerned, when the guest comes, it is the guest who brings along with him. So be assured that even if you are spending out of your pocket, Allah is providing it to you through his guest. Like there is a hadith from Prophet where he says, Inna taifa iza jaa fa nazala bil qawmi jaa bi rizqihi ma'ahu min as-sama fa idha akala ghafar allahu lahum bi nuzulihi alayhim. So Prophet is saying that if a guest is to come to a group of people, to some people, they, he brings his risk along with him from the sky. And then, Allah forgives the sins of the host because of guests coming to his house and sitting and eating with him. So we see that the, there, is a, there is no financial loss in one terms, and there is a benefit. And the benefit is that all uh, the sins of the host are forgiven. So we see that there is one way of forgiveness is by just taking out, uh, by doing tasbih of astaghfirullah, and the other mean that a prophet of Islam here is saying is that if we are concerned about our sins and if we want those sins to be, uh, to be forgiven, then one good way is to invite guests and to honor them and feed them. Uh, please recite us all. So as I mentioned earlier, that the Prophet of Islam, when he was giving a khutbah in the last Jum Juma of Shaban, he uh, mentioned many benefits of month of Ramadan, and as part of that, he recommended to uh, uh, provide food to believers when they are uh, to provide iftar to the believers. So as part of that khutbah, 
the Prophet said, وَمَنْ فَطَّرَ فِيهِ مُؤْمِنًا صَائِمًا كَانَ لَهُ بِذَلِكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ عِتْقُ رَقَبَةٍ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ لِذُنُوبِهِ فِي مَا مَضَى So the Prophet is saying is that whoever provides iftar to a believer, then Allah, then Allah rewards him and gives him the reward of freeing a slave and then all his sins that he has done in the past, those are forgiven. So one of the companion of the Prophet who was present there and listening to the khutbah, at that point he says, فَقِيلَ لَهُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لَيْسَ كُلُّنَا يَقْدِرُ عَلَىٰ عَنْ يُفَطِّرَ سَائِمًا So one of them says, not all of us are capable, we do not have enough money that we can be part of this good act and where we can provide iftar to a believer. So Prophet in response to that says, فَقَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَىٰ كَرِيمًا So Allah is kareem, He is noble, He is generous. يُعْضِي هَذَا الثَّوَابَ مِنْكُمْ مَنْ لَمْ يَغْدِرْ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ مَذْقَتِمْ مِنْ لَبَنٍ يُفَطِّرُ بِهَا سَائِمًا أو شربة من ماء أضب أو تميرات لا يقدر على أكثر من ذلك. So Prophet is saying that even though you may not be able to provide full meal, but even if you can provide a little, if you can just provide a sip of sweet water or diluted milk, and by diluted milk I don't mean like a, in terms of its fat content, but you just take milk and just pour water in it and make it, uh, just so that you can make it more and share with others. So dilute the milk, do that. Or even in small pieces of dates, if you can give it to others, do that and if you do that, your thawab, your reward, would be the same as the one who uh, provided full meal to a believer, to a, fast, a person who was fasting. So we see that from this hadith as well that we should not consider any act to be small. So first of all, who is able to give a lot? Yes, do that. But at the same time, do not think that I am so and so, I am such big, I am bigger than someone else or better than someone else. And on the other hand, the Prophet is encouraging those that if you do, are not able to do it, that's fine, but whatever you are able to do it, do it, be a part of it. Don't, uh, just don't step back and say, I cannot do anything. So whatever your ability is, contribute. And this is not only true in terms of feeding believers, we should look in terms of any way we can do and help the community, we should be doing that. As far as feeding, as, as far as feeding many people or more we can do, more generous we can be, that's better. There are many, many ahadis that uh, that are in praise of people who are generous. And the benefit of, uh, praise, uh, of generosity is uh, manifold as well. Like in, uh, Rumi, who was a Sufi poet, he has uh, very good poetry and his way is sometimes he would just mention stories of like king and maid or sometimes of animal, just tell story and then from that he makes a point. It makes a turn and then he makes a very good point. So similarly, in one place in his poetry, he mentions a story of two farmers. He mentions that one farmer is generous and the other is miser. So the farmer who is generous, whatever seeds he had, it was time to sow. So whatever, all the seeds that he had, he planted, he sowed it in the ground. Whereas the uh, farmer who was miser, he didn't do that. He just held back to, uh, to all his seeds and he said, I do not want to do it, I will lose all of this. And then Rumi says that when time came for harvesting, the one who was miser, of course there was nothing for him to harvest, but on the other side his seeds got spoiled as well because of insects and rain and other reasons. So he did not, he did not, he was not of benefit to others, but at the same time, in the end, he didn't get himself, uh, was able to keep anything for himself as well. Whatever he had, he lost it. On the other end, a farmer who was generous and who had planted everything, when time for harvest came, he benefited from it, from it, and then he was able to provide benefit to others as well. Right. So 
So whenever we share something, we do something good in whatever capability we can, not only in terms of money, but in our skill set, knowledge, in whatever way we can contribute, we should not feel shy and we should be willing to move forward and help out. As part of this hadith, if we see, uh, one view to look at it is, we see that the Prophet is saying, one who feeds a believer his reward is same as the one who is uh, not able to feed full. Even if he is giving a little, it is the same. And that is fine in the view, everything is not just looked in terms of quantity only, that I gave this much and he gave this much, so the reward should be same. There are many factors and reasons that come into play. Like as just in our lives we can see that our expectations from all our children is not the same. Our expectation from each of our child is different because we know their abilities and similarly, when someone is giving as an example, if, if a person uh, gives us, two, person, two people give us $100, right? and one gives us with an intention as a gift, and the other gives it as a bribe. Now, the amount is same, but our reaction would be different to both of them, because their intention is different. And if just at that point, a child comes in whom we love, love and he gives us one dollar only, we would, that in terms of monetary value, that one dollar can never be equal to hundred dollars. But if another way we look at it, we were never expecting that small child to give us anything. And he is giving us out of his love, so in our heart that one dollar may be, may, probably would be equivalent to that hundred dollars or even more than that. So similarly, when Allah look at his creatures, he is not looking at in terms of quantity only. There are, other, uh, there are other factors as well. He knows us, he, what our capabilities are, what our abilities are, what we are able to do, what we are not able to do. And then he knows the state of our heart, what is driving us, what is holding us back, what is that we want to do, what are the reasons behind that. And then he knows how much we love him. And based on that, and there are many other reasons that could, that could play a role in determining that factor. But at least we can say that just based on quantity, we should not be taking pride that I am better than someone or not. It is Allah. Allah knows the state of the heart. Taqwa is the state of the heart and only He knows what is in our heart. Um, there is another hadith uh, from our sixth Imam, uh, Imam Jafar as Sadiq alayhi salam. Muhammad bin Qais, he is a companion of our sixth Imam, and he mentions that he was sitting with the Imam, and there were other companions present as well and the companions were talking about some group of people, and then Muhammad bin Qais says, by Allah, I do not have either lunch or dinner, while either two of them or three of them, or sometimes even more of them, they are sitting with me and I provide them food. So at this point, Imam says, Fadluhum alayka aksaru min fadlika alayhim. Their favor on you is more than your favor on them. So the companion asks, how is that possible while I provide them food, I spend my money, my servants are helping them, so how is it possible that their favor on me is greater than my favor on them? So the Imam replies, وَإِذَا دَخَلُوا alay, دَخَلُوا مِنَ اللَّهِ بِرِزْقِ الْكَثِيرِ وَإِذَا خَرَجُوا خَرَجُوا بِالْمَغْفِرَةِ So Imam is saying that when they come to you, they bring risk kathir, abundant risk, along with themselves. And when they leave, they leave behind makhfira for you, forgiveness for you. So we see that it's not only the case, they bring uh, sustenance that is sufficient for them, they bring more and they do not take back what is left. And then on top of that, there is uh, makhfira, forgiveness that the host gets. 
one interesting aspect of this hadith is to uh, see is that uh, this hadith shows light on the uh, ojb which is one of the uh, soul of the disease where a person feels good about himself that i am something i do something and just to understand what it is we can compare it with takabbur takabbur is pride where one look at once or the other and says i am better than him in terms of wealth in terms of skills in terms of knowledge in terms of ibada whereas oj is something where a person looks at himself and says how good i am like in this case a person is saying i feed so many people every day so that's the difference now knowing oneself and doing good and recognizing in oneself is not bad but what is important is that one should recognize that whatever blessings we have whatever good we are doing that is a favor from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well and when we recognize that and then we feel happy about our doing good then there is no problem with that this is all about now there are many recommendations in terms of that when a believer invites you then you must also accept it it is sunna muakkada prophet would always accept the invitation whether they be poor or be free man or slave so it is highly recommended then when someone invites us we can uh, we should always attend uh, try to attend uh, since we are running out of time i would just end my uh, first khutba over here بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستدي ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون وجعله وجعله رحمه للعالمين بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا من يطيع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فقد غوى اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك سيد المرسلين ورسول رب العالمين اللهم صل على امير المؤمنين وبسي رسول رب العالمين وعلى فاطمه الزهراء وعلى الحسن والحسين وعلي ابن الحسين ومحمد ابن علي وجعفر ابن محمد وموسى ابن جعفر وعلي ابن موسى ومحمد ابن علي وعلي ابن محمد والحسن ابن علي والحجة ابن الحسن القائم المحدي صلوات الله عليهم اجمعين اللهم افتح له فتحا يسيرا وانصره نصرا عزيزا اللهم اظهر به دينك وسنه نبيك حتى لا يستخفي يا بشيء من الحق مخافه احد من الخلق اللهم انا نرغب اليك في دوله كريمه تعز بها الاسلام واهلا وتذل بها النفاق واهلا وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاه الى طاعتك 
والقادة في سبيلك وترزقنا فيها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة So in our first khutbah, we looked at the benefits of hosting and inviting believers. In the second khutbah, I want to look at our relationship with Allah as well. And we can see that our relationship with Allah as well is in a way of that of host and guest. But before I do that, I want to take a step back and think that whenever as guest we visit someone, what our behavior is. Usually we display the best of our behavior, we show best of our manners, and then when we go to the host house, they do have some rules, like they keep the doors of some rooms closed, and when that is the case, we just don't go into those rooms, we stay away from those rooms. Similarly, when it's time for eating, whatever is placed on the table, we just eat that, we just don't go out to the fridge and say, hey, what else can I get from the fridge, right? So, and whatever, and we are content with whatever our host provides us. And then when it comes time to leave, usually we thank them and we are grateful to them for whatever they have provided. So keeping this in mind, if we look at our relationship with God, that is the same as expected. We read in Quran, there are many ayah that indicate, which say that, where Allah says that, I am the one who created you. I am the one who created the heavens and the earth. I am the one who sends down water from the sky. I am the one who makes the land green. I am the one who makes all these vegeta vegetables and fruits, all these grow. And then I am the one who created this, these cattle and made these available for you to use. So, and then there are, there are many other ayahs which says, Kulu washrabu min rizqallah. Eat and drink from whatever Allah has provided you. So we see in a way that Allah is our host as well. He created us and whatever we need to live in this world, He is providing that to us. Now, there is no doubt that Allah is the best of hosts. Who he has made everything available to us. But just like any host, normal host that whom we visit, Allah has also has some expectations for, for us. There are some places which he has said, you should not go there. Those are places of sin. So we should avoid that as well. And then similarly, he has kept some food items in the fridge as well. There are some food and drinks that he said, do not think about it, these are not for you, there is some other purpose for it. So similarly, we should not be looking at those as well. So we, and then whatever he provides us in our life, we need to be content and then be grateful for that. Our day should not end until we say, say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And then uh, earlier in my first khutbah, I had mentioned that one of the benefit of hosting is that uh, inviting guests is that you get a chance to build relationship and make bonds with other people. So uh, similarly, when we are in this world, there is a chance Allah has given us an opportunity to get to know Allah, get his marifa and build relationships with him, get close to him, through Ibadat, and since the month of Ramadan is approaching, is very near. When we do, there are many of these recommended acts, so we need to keep in mind that we have an opportunity through this Ibadat, whatever we can do in the month of Ramadan, to try and get Marifa of Allah and try to build relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please resort salawat. اللهم ما حملتنا من الحق فعرفنا وما قصرنا عنه فعلمنا إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القرب وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لألكم تذكرون